Hi, I'm Sharon from Little Bell Lane Creations and welcome to my first episode of my mini series that I am calling English Paper Piecing Back to Basics. So today's episode is going to be a really short one. We're just going to cover some of the essential supplies that you need to begin your English paper piecing journey. So everything that I have in my kit you will see before you at the moment. So let's go over them one by one. I am a glue baster in my English paper piecing, so that means I need a glue pen and glue. So I use the Soline glue pen. It has little glue sticks that go in it that are retractable. That's my glue pen. And then we have our glue stick refills. So these come in packs of two or packs of six. There are also available in blue and pink. Which colour you select doesn't matter. They do the same thing. They are just different colours. Next up, we need a fabric pencil. So again, I use the Soline fabric pencil. It's a retractable pencil that you can refill the lids and replace the erasers at the end for. Next up, you are going to be needing some thread. I solely use the Superior Threads, the bottom line thread. It's a 60 weight polyester thread. Um, in my kit, wherever I go, you'll always find these three colours. So this is 655. It's a soft cream off-white. 623 is a very soft grey. And 625 is black. So those three colours always live in my thread stash. In addition to that, I have the Superior Bob's Donut. It has 35 different coloured pre-wound bobbins in it and all comes in this rubber ring to keep them stored nice and safe. This is good if you find that you're in a position where you need to thread match. You don't need to thread match every colour, but sometimes there is a need where you do would like to thread match. So these is these are great. That's a new one that I've got sitting in my stash waiting to break into. But this is the one I've been using for the last couple of years. As you can see, it's missing a couple. It's well worn. I've got colours that are getting very low on. So what I have started doing is as these colours start to go missing from my bobbin, this bobbin, I will actually go and buy the full spool. So I've got a full spool of the dark pink. I've got a full spool of the red. I've got the black over here. The soft grey that was in it is over there. So these are great to work with. They stay in. They don't fall out. They're a handy little thing. They are an investment piece. They can be quite pricey. So it's not something you need straight away, but it might be something that you're looking at investigating in later. Uh, a nice pair of scissors. I love these Karen Buckley scissors. I think this is the medium size. I could be wrong there, but they have a nice serrated edge and they're really nice to use. Next is your needles. Needles can be a very personal choice and they're something that I recommend that you try and experiment with and find a needle that works well for you. I use a size 10 or a size 11 milliner's needle. Now these tulip ones, this is a size 10, but you will notice it says big eye. I buy the big eye ones, but don't be fooled. The eye is not big, but it is bigger than the regular. So these are great. I also like to use um, the John James needles. They're in a yellow cardboard packaging. I don't have any here at the moment, but they're also a great needle to use. Okay, what next? A sandpaper board and a fussy cutting mirror. Sandpaper boards are great when you are fussy cutting your fabric because you lay your fabric over the grit of the sandpaper and it holds your fabric in place while you're tracing your template. Makes it easier, more accurate. Uh, fussy cutting mirror, we'll cover the use of it in another episode. It's an awesome tool. Our binding clips are also handy. You can use them to hold your elements together, as in if you've fussy cut a block and you want to hold six triangles together and six hexagons together, you just clip it on and they're grouped together. And you can also group your pieces in order that you want to stitch. So you're just picking off the top and sewing. You don't have to lay it out in front and do it all. Um, next up will be a thimble. A thimble is another one of those things that is very much a personal choice. 
When I started English paper piecing, I think I tried nearly every thimble that was on the market and I just couldn't find one that worked for me. Until one day I found and tried this thimble. Works brilliantly. It's a metal pad and it has little stickers and you stick it to your finger, which is awesome. But then I started to find that my thread was getting caught around my thimble. So I went back to a previous option I'd tried, which was this rubber thimble. And now I combine the two. So what I do is I put my metal thimble inside my rubber thimble and put it on my finger. That way the metal thimble sits exactly where I want on my finger and the rubber thimble holds it in place. This also means that this metal thimble can be used so many times and I'm not mucking around with these tiny little stickers. So that's what works for me. You'll just have to have a play and see what works for you. In addition to that, you're going to require some basic patchwork supplies. So a patchwork ruler and your rotary cutters. Now, a couple of optional extras that you may like to add to your EPP kit are a thread balm. A thread balm is not a necessity, especially when you're using the superior bottom line thread. It's not needed, but it is a nice little accessory to have. It can add, well, it conditions your thread, helps your thread slide more smoothly through your fabrics it doesn't get caught it just like glides through and it also can provide a soft scent as you're sitting there sewing you just get a nice little whiff of whatever scent of the thread balm that you use now i use a thread balm that wendy at the next stitch here in australia sought out created worked with um, and other Australian small businesses to create. And it is absolutely gorgeous. I have two scents of my own that are in limited edition. So there's a spiced orange and a vanilla. The great thing about Wendy's Thread Balm is these little slide boxes or tins. They slide open, so they're one-handed use. So let me show, for example, I haven't shown you this yet, but hey. Okay, I'm going to take a pre-threaded needle out. I want to use my thread balm. I simply slide it open, push my thread down, close it one handed, goes away, swipe my finger, my thread balm's ready to use. Okay, what is this little thing that I just had out? This is a clover thread dome. I work with a couple of these at all times. They hold 10 needles in them and you can pre thread them. So the great thing is if I've just finished sewing something and my needle is empty, I can open up that underneath I can open up and put my needle back in here I know where my needle is for one I'm not going to lose it down the side of my couch and I can grab my next pre-threaded needle out when you load these clover domes you thread your needle with your thread you come along you slide it in you put your thread in that little slit and then you just wind it around with your finger until your thread is all underneath and in there I've never had them get tangled so like I said, up to 10 and it goes in here. And the great thing is this is up to 10. These hold 10 needles. A lot of needles come in packs of 10. So I work 10 needles at a time. So when these start bending and breaking, I know that it's time to throw them all out and get a new set of 10 needles. Okay, I think that's it. I hope you find it informative. If you have any questions, please just ask. And... What's next, you may ask? Well, it's simply a matter of picking your pattern that you want to make, getting your templates and your papers. But we'll discuss more about that in the next episode. Bye.